That was warm up. <laughs> Welcome to everybody. House full of visitors. I started to say we got a section back there for the Edwards family. They got a bunch. So, and but I, I've seen a house full of visitors. So thank you for those that have invited visitors and visitors. Welcome to our church. So glad to have you. Our pastor and his wife in, expected to be here today, but he got sick when they were out of town. And he is, he is doing better and able to travel now, so they'll be coming home today. This is going to be a very special service today. We have our Easter musical, and it's going to be narrated throughout with uh, the message of the gospel. So I hope you all enjoy this musical very much. Let us open in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for given us a wonderful day. Thank you for the church and not this building, Lord, but your church, your family who has come to know you as their Savior. Thank you for the work that you have done for us in redemption and coming to earth and living and dying and rising again. We thank you, God, that we can have relationship with you today and we pray that all that is said and done this day will be to your honor and your glory. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, we've, uh, for the last several weeks, we've had testimonies from members of our church come. And I'm just loving this part of what Andy has started doing because as, as you just think over the past few weeks of those that have given their testimonies, well, you really get to see who they are, where they've been, what they've been through. And so, what a special thing. We're going to have Tom Smith come this morning and give his testimony. I 
I know Pastor Andy's not here, but if you think back over the last few Sundays, who's given their testimony, it's been Brother Greg, Miss April, and now myself. And there is a common thread between the three of us. Anyone want to take a guess what it is? We're all new additions to the staff. <laughs> so, you know. Thanks, Pastor Andy. Yes, welcome. All right. As Pastor Andy has stated, he wants these testimonies to reflect Easter. And as I thought about this, what reflects Easter? And God just kept putting in my, my mind new beginnings. Throughout life, <clears throat> we have new beginnings, whether it's marriage, kids, grandkids, new jobs. So today I want to share just a couple of those new beginnings with you. I was raised as any Polish ancestry or ancestor. I was Catholic, and I was a good little Catholic boy. I was baptized as an infant, went to uh, confession, went to confirmation, did the things I was supposed to do, went to midnight mass and Easter, and that was about where we went to church. My father was a hardworking man. He provided for his family very well. We never went without food. We never went without clothes on our back. My mom took care of the house and the kids. The only problem was my dad was a functioning alcoholic and my mom lived on Valium. As a child, I spent the majority of my Friday and Saturday nights at the beer joints with my parents. Around the age of 12, I would start driving my dad home after he's had one too many beers. Not the exact experience you want at 12 years old. I disliked my dad during those times, but I never stopped loving him. My life began to change in 1973. That's when I met Rebecca, my wife. She drove a country squire station wagon while I rode my 10-speed bicycle. Okay. <laughs> she had a license and I didn't. It wasn't long though, I did have my license and I drove to her house every day because gas was cheap. Like any good boyfriend, I started attending church with her, a Baptist church. The problem was, is when I walked in, I did not find the holy water. Okay? <laughs> if you've been to a Catholic church, you know what I'm talking about. We didn't sit, stand, kneel, sit, stand, kneel. But I enjoyed that type of church. I enjoyed it very much. Fast forward a few years, Rebecca and I were married on September the 11th, 1976. And if you're good in math, 9-11 did happen on our 25th wedding anniversary. That's a story for another day. Okay. A new beginning? Yes. Early one Saturday morning, Rebecca's mom called us and said we need to hurry to the house. Rebecca's dad had serious illness, so we thought maybe something happened to him. When we walked in the door, sitting in the living room were her parents, her brother and sister, our pastor from church, and the worship leader. That Saturday morning, the family, including myself, accepted Christ as their Savior. A new beginning? Maybe. Over the next few years, I wondered, was I really saved? I didn't act differently. I didn't feel differently. And I think Rebecca knew something wasn't quite right. She never pressured me, but she continued to pray for me. In October of 1980, our church was having a revival service. It was during one of those revival services that I truly accepted Christ as my Savior. A new beginning? Absolutely. Since then, my life hasn't been the same. Looking back, I can see how the hand of God has directed my life. Many times, the only explanation to the events in my life can be summed up with two words. Only God. Thank you. Amen. Ushers, we're going to go ahead and do the... Uh, offering now so that we don't break up the 
the musical. If y'all come forward, please. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for your provision on our families as you meet our needs year in and year out. Thank you for this time, Lord, this offering that we take. May every bit of it be used to honor and to glorify your name and to further your kingdom. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. as well and I'm just so proud of the choir and the hard work that they've done and um, the sound guys and everything that's going on behind the scenes uh, we just want to glorify the Lord this morning we want to encourage you if you know some of these songs um, there will be some songs that we've done before and I would just encourage you just to worship the Lord uh, just let him do something in your heart this morning as we sing to and worship the Lord together amen Good morning, and welcome to Southwinds Baptist Church. Easter is a time to celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is a powerful reminder of the freedom and mercy that comes from Jesus. We have been buried beneath our shame and failures, and Jesus calls us out of the darkness into his glorious day, a message of Jesus' love and grace. Romans 8, 1 and 2 reminds us, therefore, I'm sorry. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Through Jesus, we are set free from the condemnation of our past. In Ephesians 2, 4 through 5, Paul writes, But God, who rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Now, only his great love for us are we saved and made alive. Thank you, Jesus, for our salvation.
The central theme of the Bible is redemption and salvation. In the Old Testament, hundreds of prophecies were given about Jesus Christ and his coming. John the Baptist introduces Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. His testimony was a direct result of the first two disciples, Peter and Andrew, who began to follow Jesus. Calling Jesus the Lamb references the Old Testament tradition concerning Jesus as the Passover Lamb. In Revelation, there are several references as, of Jesus as the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Let us together thank God for Jesus and what he's done for us on the cross.
The significance of the blood is the most important part of scripture. In Hebrews 9.22, it says, And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission, no forgiveness of sin. Ephesians 1.7 reminds us that in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. In Hebrews 13.12, we see that Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy, to sanctify them through his own blood. The blood of Christ not only purifies, redeems, sanctifies, it also speaks. The blood of Christ speaks to God for us. Hebrews 12, 24, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. The blood of Jesus speaks of better things than the blood of Abel. Christ's blood speaks not of accusation and vengeance, but it speaks to God for us so that we might be justified, reconciled, forgiven, and redeemed. It is by this blood we are cleansed. a life that paid my way death its price when it flowed down from the cross my sins were gone my sins forgot there is a grave that tried to hide this precious blood that gave me life in three days he breathed again and rose to stand in my defense and so I come tell you he's alive, to tell you that he dries every tear that falls. So I come to tell you that he saves, to shout and to proclaim that he's coming back for you.
to tell you that he saves, to shout and to proclaim that he's coming back for you. His life, His blood, oh, He paid, He paid the price, He gave His life to wash away my sins. Sing it with us. What can wash away? that tried to hide this precious blood that gave me life. But in three days, he breathed again and rose to stand in my Thank you, Jesus, for the blood.
Zechariah 13.1. In that day, a fountain shall be opened for the house of David and for the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. The fountain was the atoning death of the pierced one. Jesus' side was pierced while on the cross. John 19.34. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear. And immediately blood and water came out. The water is for cleansing and the blood for a covering and atonement for our sin. There is no other fount that flow for our forgiveness.
devastating. The confusing part was that my dad was such a devoted member of the church. So I concluded that religion was a hypocrite's game, one I did not care to play. Yet God in his mercy and grace was always drawing me unto him. I saw him provide for our family in so many tangible ways after my parents divorced. Food, clothing, Christmas gifts, house payments that prevented us from eviction, jobs, he provided it all. Later as a teen, I finally understood who Christ was, the savior of the world. I understood that he desired a relationship with me. I accepted his payment for my sin and ran into the arms of his love, a love I had never known before. God was always reaching down through the hands of his people shining light into the fear and darkness of my soul. I am no longer afraid of the dark. darkness, my God, that is who you are. 
never stop, you never stop working. forgiveness that Jesus offers us. The Bible tells us in Romans 5, 8, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus died for us even though we were sinners. He showed us grace and mercy and gave us a way to be forgiven. Because of his resurrection, Jesus gives us the victory over death. In 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through 57, Paul tells the church in Corinth, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of the sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our, through, Lord, through our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus we have a blessed hope and a future in heaven with him. Let us give thanks for what he's done and give him the glory and honor he deserves. Praise God for what He's done. 
Hallelujah to the King, He is worthy to receive all the worship we can gives us hope and assurance that he is alive and active in our lives. Let us give thanks that Jesus conquered death and that he holds our life, our future, in his hands. Amen. 
there is an unquestionable proclamation of the supremacy of Jesus. This proclamation beckons us to align our understanding with the truth that Jesus is the name above every other name and the only way to God. Let us focus on Jesus as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, our Savior and Redeemer. Let's lift our voices, our hopes, and our lives in praise to the one who is truly the name above all names.
praise we will sing. There is no higher name. Hallelujah. Every voice will proclaim. There is no higher name. Hallelujah. Age to age we will sing. Somebody say the name of Jesus. Come on. Somebody shout the name of Jesus. There is no name higher. There is no name greater than the name of Jesus. And we pray that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, that you may know what the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe. And according to his might, the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at the right hand in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but in the world that is to come. And God hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness which filleth all in all, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created, whether things in heaven, whether things in earth, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and through him all things consist. He is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all things dwell. And wherefore God, and wherefore God highly exalted him and has given him the name which is above every name, that name that is Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, that Jesus Christ is Lord, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So with one song, with one voice, let us lift up the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, the name above every name, the name above all names, the name of Jesus. Let's stand together. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Age to voice will proclaim there is no higher name. Hallelujah. Age to age. Age to age we will sing there is no higher name. Hallelujah. Every voice will proclaim there is no higher name. Hallelujah. Age to age. Age to age we will sing there is no higher name. Hallelujah. Every voice will proclaim there is no higher name. Hallelujah. Age to age we will sing. There is no higher name.
You know, Andy, are we on again? Yeah. Sometimes when the worship is so wonderful, he'll say, let's just say amen and go home. <laughs> and, and boy, other hand, he gets criticized for, not criticized, maybe teased for the sermon after the sermon <laughs> when there's just so much. And I promise, I'm just up here to close. <laughs> So you're not, you're not in for another sermon. But that, that, that worship was so wonderful. And I, I just hope that all your hearts are just full of his glory. And just, you know, the Bible says that if we don't cry out, even the stones would cry out in worship. And boy, what a shame that would be if literal rocks are having to cry out because... Because we won't worship him. But uh, I, just, I just praise God for the opportunity we've had today to come together as a body. As I stood in the back and I'm seeing people just worshiping and their hearts so full. Just the body coming together to worship is wonderful. And today, all that was glorified was the name of Jesus Christ. So many of the words of those songs, what he's done, what he's done, he has redeemed us. He has saved us. I wrote down some of them. uh, And so I come to tell you he's alive and that he lives and that he's coming back again. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. (coughs) So I'm going to close with where we started, Revelation chapter 5. I want to read just a couple of verses there. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts, and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands, just innumerable angels. And what were they doing? Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea And all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And it's not done. It goes on. We were created for worship. That's that's what God created us, to be in communion with him and worship. So I'm going to close in prayer. And then uh, after I say amen, I've got just two or three announcements, but I don't want to put those in right now. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this morning that we have had. I thank you for music. I thank you for creating us to love you, to know you, to have relationship, to have fellowship. And just to be able to sing your glory and your honor and your praise. For truly, God, you are worthy, as your word declares. And as we have been blessed to be able to cry out and sing today, you are worthy. Excuse me. So thank you, God, for being right here with us today. And thank you for this glorious and wonderful time of worshiping you. And it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay, announcements. We will remove half the chairs, everybody, like we typically do. And we do have small groups today at the designated times, the ones that are up here, 5 o'clock. And then there's a couple of them at 1, I believe, at the other places. So everybody is welcome to that. And house full of visitors today. We want to say welcome, and we're so glad you came. And thank you for coming and being a part of our church today and worshiping with us. 
We have the Welcome Center guest services over here, and I'm going to walk over there. My wife will be over there. If anybody has any questions, if anybody's heart has been touched and you want prayer, or if anyone doesn't know what it means to, as the Bible calls, to be born again or to be saved or to receive Christ as your Savior, to trust Him, then I would be glad to show you in the Bible that or let you know that our church is open and Andy or Misty would love to meet with any of you who want to know more about what you've heard today. So, <laughs> worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive honor and glory and power. Everybody say, Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Mark.